Hi, good morning to one and all. I did you revise the lesson that we saw yesterday? The first video, our lesson, environment. Okay, NSK radio is conducting an interview with our Wangari Madai. Okay, now, in the first place itself, she told that at the beginning itself, they understood that, uh, I mean, the problem of the villages, it is directly connected with the environment. So, their needs, basic needs, uh, drinking water, food, food for the animals, uh, then energy, firewood, all those things they get from land. And it is degraded. The land and environment is degraded. So, we have to rehabilitate the environment. That is what they realized. The only way to rehabilitate it is to plant trees. That is a solution. Yes. So, only solution is to, I mean, uh, plant trees. Another thing, you see, I mean, um, the African stool. Three legs stand for peace, good governance and sustainable management of resources. If only these three things are there, that there can be development. If only three legs are there, we can put a base on that, that is development. Development is possible if only these three things are there. What are they? Uh, peace number one. Good governance number two and sustainable management of resources. Yes, these are the main points that we saw yesterday. Okay. Then let us continue. Next question, page number 153-153. Okay now. I hope you are ready with the test books. What happened when you started working with women? Okay, generally. I mean, ladies, I mean, women's movement is very difficult to uh, uh, go on or pull on. Uh, very difficult now, women. Well, the first time when I told them, let us plant trees to rehabilitate the environment, there is only one solution, that is planting trees. So, when I told them the first time, for the first time, Yes, they said they did not know how to plant trees. Their answer was that they did not know how to plant the trees. So when I told them for the first time, the only solution for our problem is to plant trees, they answered me that they did not know you see, how to plant trees. So I asked the foresters to come and teach them. So, as a solution to it, I asked the foresters, those are experts in planting trees, I mean, um, I mean the forests, etc. I asked them to come and teach them. And, but they were very complicated. See, planting trees in a systematic way, scientific way, is very complicated for the illiterate, ignorant uh, women to learn. So for them it was very complicated because they had no education, they were no literate. Literate means actually able to read and write. Read and write. Those who are not able to read and write are known as illiterate. Okay, not literate. So uh, I mean uh, the system or the I mean a scheme of planting trees according to the foresters, it was very complicated for ordinary illiterate I mean uh, women uh, to understand so they are professionals the foresters are professionals amateur and professional see amateur means inexperienced uh, professional means well experienced and well trained that is professional okay now so the foresters are professionals and the women uh, we I mean, uh, uh, like me, you see, we are amateurs with the no previous experience. Okay, so the scheme or the system of planting trees according to foresters, it was very complicated. Okay, and the foresters were professionals. 
it became very complicated for ordinary illiterate women so it is very it became very complicated for them for whom the illiterate ordinary women so i told the women we shall use our uh, common sense now we need not follow any of the schemes or theories or book knowledge what is told in the book systematic way nothing is required we use our common sense in what way and just do what we do with the other seeds yes how do we plant other trees for example women work on the farms generally they are workers they are the ones who plant uh, i mean they are the one i mean ones who cultivate and they are the ones ones who produce food yes these people women they do all kinds of work like this is it not so all the uh, all planting uh, planting seeds uh, i mean uh, cultivation all these things are done generally by women ah uh, so i told them that seeds of trees are like uh, any other seeds consider these uh, seeds of trees just like uh, other trees other seeds i mean uh, of cultivation so i asked them to consider the seeds of plants uh, just like uh, seeds of other other seeds just as we do for cultivation so if they were to treat this tree seeds the same way they treat other seeds of food crops in the same way they should treat other seeds of food crops there is no difference there will be no more difference so let us use our common sense to plant trees so consider the seeds i mean of trees are just like other uh, seeds of uh, food crops i told them to look for broken pots yes we don't spend much money we are poor people now so they were poor people so uh, i asked them to search for uh, broken pots thrown out pots earth and where pots will they use generally when it's broken they will keep it out or throw it away so this is good for nothing for them but it can be used for planting uh, seeds yes broken pores even and put seeds there i asked them to find out some broken pores and plant the seeds of trees there they will germinate yes they will begin to grow germinate slowly slowly two leaves four leaves 16 leaves growing up they will germinate and they will know these are the seedlings from the seeds they planted and gave them the and we gave them plastic bags so we gave them plastic bags to be able to put those seedlings and uh, to nurture them yes uh, nurture to grow them and when they were about half a meter low so first they planted the seeds in broken pots etc then uh, it was uh, changed after some day and we gave them some plastic bags also uh, when the uh, trees i mean became Uh, how how long uh, is it half a meter yes they could go and transplant them on their farms these uh, trees could be transplanted on their farms in the beginning it was difficult to very difficult for illiterate women to plant these trees etc but they soon gained confidence gradually the women got confidence back and they became very competent as foresters expert competent having competency okay now expert foresters gradually slowly after some time these women became a competent foresters so i called them foresters without diplomas yes martha line why did she call them foresters without diplomas they had no previous experience so i asked them to plant uh, using the, their common sense is uh, again uh, plant the seeds just like they uh, plant the seeds of uh, food crops for cultivation so they might plant in uh, uh, broken pots uh, plastic bags etc when the plant grows at least half a meter i mean uh, we would transplant them and plant them in the uh, in the farms so with no previous experience they began learning it ah uh, they had no they had no qualification for doing that they were not foresters no training they were illiterate yes so i called them foresters without diplomas with no qualification 
no diploma, no graduation, nothing, no training, nothing was there, only using their common sense they, that they were planting these trees. So why call them forest trees without diplomas? Next question. Why do you think they responded so well to your message? So why do you think that they responded? Good response was there uh, from the women. Why do you think? What's the reason behind that? It was a need. It's a need for them. When the women said they needed firewood and building material, their need of firewood, building material, etc. We responded to that need. We were responding to the need of the women. Plant trees, then you will have uh, trees for firewood. Yes, you plant trees, maybe 5 to 10 years you can get, I mean, uh, what's that? Uh, see, uh, firewood from the same plant you will get. In the tropics, the trees grow very fast. I mean, uh, uh, tropics, you know, uh, it will be hot climate near the equator, etc. So the plants, they can grow so fast, sunlight is there, you know, and more. That's the main reason. In 5 to 10 years, this tree there was firewood. These trees that we plant now will provide us with whatever we are in need of building material. Then, uh, I mean, uh, firewood, uh, all these things we can get as building materials. Yes, they, these trees would provide us with uh, firewood as well as building materials. Once we had planted those trees, we saw the need for them to understand why we have to have good governance. Then we realized that, I mean, we should have, we must have good governance. So it became important to give them civic education. Yes, if you want to achieve our goals, we should have good governance. So we have to give them civic education, social education. People should know what is going on around, uh, what kind of government they are having and how, should, how they should respond to them. So they were in need of social education, civic education, study on social matches, etc. Civic education, so that they could understand how we govern ourselves. Yes, we govern ourselves of the people, by the people and for the people. That's democracy, you know. Democratic system of government should be there. So we govern ourselves. So to understand how we govern ourselves, we need to, we had the need to make them understand all these things by giving them civic education. Yes, yeah, yeah. so we should know how we govern ourselves. Why we, see, why we govern ourselves and the way we govern ourselves. Why we govern ourselves and the way we govern ourselves. Why we are managing our environment the way we are managing it. What is the importance of managing, maintaining, I mean, um, our environment the day, the way that we are doing it. Because we are dealing with the environment, we gave them education both in civics and also, and also in a environment. We trained them, gave them education, social education we gave them. Yes, that made them understand clearly why they should take up the responsibility. So that education, civic education, make them understand that they should take the responsibility of protecting their environment. So the, you must take this women, the ordinary people of the villages, they should take the responsibility of her, what her, protecting their environment. It is your duty. Yes, it was not the responsibility of her, the government or the responsibility of somebody else or someone else. It is not anybody's duty or anybody's responsibility. It is your responsibility to protect the environment. Oh, you see, somebody has to come and rehabilitate the environment on their own land. It is them and it is their responsibility. Don't expect anyone to come and protect your environment. So it is your duty and it is your responsibility. So I made them understand that it is your duty, it is our duty to protect our environment and rehabilitate the degraded environment. Yes, I trained them, gave them education, made them understand that it is a duty to protect our environment. 
not expecting somebody else to come and do that is our duty our responsibility so i gave them the class the training and make them made them understand and it is their duty and is their own duty very good then what transformations did you see so after giving them education civic education what transformation did you see i mean after this education what change a transformation is one of the bigger transformations i mean that i saw was uh, the ability of an ordinary illiterate women woman to get to understand and to be able to plant trees you see the ability of an ordinary illiterate woman to get to understand she was able to understand and to be able to plant trees that in 5 or 10 years uh, become i mean became big trees so ordinary i mean uh, uh, women were able to plant trees that in 5 to 10 years uh, they become big trees and she was able to cut them and be able to give her self energy so she is becoming what a uh, i mean self sufficient she or any woman i mean plants uh, trees on her own and when that tree grows up and become big trees she can collect firewood from the same trees so she gets a confidence that she can manage uh, herself yes to be able to sell those trees and give herself an income and by selling those trees you see it brings them an income regular income okay to be able to feel confident that she had done something for herself she feels confident that she was able to do something for herself so threefold i mean benefits are there number one she would get firewood number two a sell the trees and make money number three she would get a confidence that she is able to do things by herself without any external agencies or forces okay na so she takes it every woman in the village neighborhood or nearby places take the responsibility of planting trees as a result of that first she would get a firewood then she would sell the trees and make an income and thirdly she gets the confidence that's what the most important factor is that she gets a confidence that she can do she could do things by herself without anybody's compulsion or without any external agencies that sense of pride as it gave them uh, the women the sense of pride you see and sense of dignity as dignity of status is there in the preamble itself in the constitution dignity that they are uh, not begging so they don't need to beg somebody else for firewood or something of that kind that they are doing things for themselves and uh, was very empowering this i mean uh, feeling of dignity and uh, i mean pride was something empowering it empowered them gave them the power to feel that they were doing something great they can do it by they could do it by, by themselves and it was that feeling of dignity was something empowering it empowered them that they are able to plant trees make firewood by themselves sell the trees and and, and, and get an income too Yes, the transformation was very powerful. The most important transformation is that empowerment of women. Empowerment of women. Women. How they were empowered when the women began planting trees in five to ten years. They were able to get firewood first and income second by selling the trees, and they felt confidence that they were able to do things by themselves. it was empowering the other is a transformation of the landscape the second effect of the result was that the landscape is completely changed places where there was dust there are no more dust as i mean there were lot of trees being planted they grew up and up no more dust was there there are trees even birds and rabbits as i mean left uh, creatures like birds rabbits the ecosystem natural environment retained or came back okay now there were birds there were rabbits small creatures etc etc they come back and they make the environment very beautiful 
the environment is made of very very beautiful natural surroundings they live in their natural surroundings there is a shade and sometimes even dry springs come back because the water is not running the water is going into the ground that's the greatest of all transformations the water goes into the ground because trees are there they don't simply flow out when the rain comes generally if trees are not there but will flow into the nearby stream rivers reaching the sea ultimately but that is gone now a lot of trees a good number of trees uh, were there i mean as a result of that when the rain comes the water goes into the i mean soil a uh, the reservoir it becomes so we can take it back whenever we are in need of that yes very profound transformation profound means deep means very strong deep deep transformation to us because the entire landscape changed the life of the women changed first of all the life of the women changed first of all because i told just now last paragraph is not so it was empowering secondly the landscape changed the entire landscape changed a sudden change i mean gradually of course but a lot of trees dust was no more water going in and all the small creatures like squirrels etc came by and they were able to live in their natural surroundings yes these creatures like birds uh is etc they were able to live in their natural surroundings in their habitat okay and the other transformation that i saw was the willingness of the people to fight for their rights other change i found was that people are willing to fight for their rights to decide that they have a right to good clean environment they have a right to get a, a clean environment to decide that uh, they will fight for their forest they are willing to fight for their forest they will protect their forest and they will not allow corrupt leaders to take their uh, public land ever all they will not allow corrupt leaders to i mean uh, seize capture their uh, public land yes they are always vigil on the alert that they won't permit they won't allow the corrupt leaders to snatch away the public land from them they have got a civic education they should know they are ruled by themselves it is their duty to take care of their affairs and activities and they are always on the alert and they make sure that this corrupt leaders don't take away their public land there is a transformation i saw first of all empowerment of women the landscape changed then they became responsible to make sure that things are going on in the natural way how do you think you can influence the rest of africa is he uh, how can you influence the remaining part of africa our efforts will inspire other people it will be great inspiration our efforts will inspire it will be great inspiration yes to stop wasting their resources they would stop uh, wasting their resources and their youth in wars see fighting wars and fighting they would not waste their youth their energy in fighting etc and instead engage in a creating a peaceful environment their energy will be spent for creating a peaceful environment more peaceful states as a result of that there will be more peaceful states and countries i am very happy about the fact that uh, now in africa you see new efforts of ensuring that africans engage in dialogue there is no fighting no more fighting we should engage in a dialogue discussion and that they invest in peaceful negotiations for conflict so conflict should pay way for a negotiation no more conflict discussion negotiation and uh, peace yes they should engage in a uh, uh, negotiations okay now and a discussion and as a result peace should prevail that we manage our environment we must be able to manage our environment for that we must negotiate no more conflicts we must restore our environment and try to ensure that we do not fight yes we should ensure that no more fighting only discussion and peace because we are allowing the environment especially the land to be degraded so we are allowing you see our land to be 
degraded. See, quality is low, that is a degrade. Degrading. See, quality getting lost or polluted. Okay, and then we fight over agricultural land, grazing land, grassland. So you fight for agricultural land and land for, I mean, animals to graze, I mean, grass, etc. I see a lot of hope in what is happening in Somalia. There is a, a lot of hope, optimism. What is happening in Somalia? What is happening in Sudan, other African countries? What is happening in West Africa? I find a lot of hope and optimism. What is going on around other nations like Somalia, Sudan and West Africa? I see a lot of African leaders encouraging each other to engage in dialogue. No more conflict, only dialogue and only peace. In that peace, we must be able to, I mean, protect our environment. Yes, what is the one thing we can do? What should we do? For me, my greatest activity is to plant a tree. I told you in the beginning, I mean, uh, they planted uh, 51 million trees as part of their program. Okay, now. So my duty is to plant trees and make them do that as much as possible. The most number of, you see how much are possible that we should do. Planting trees is my main program. See, for me, my greatest activity is to plant a tree. I think that a tree is a wonderful symbol for the environment. Yes, a tree is a wonderful symbol of a for the environment and when we plant a tree we plant hope every tree is a symbol of hope underline that when we plant a tree we plant i mean hope in our mind a tree is a symbol of hope we plant the future for ourselves yes when we plant a tree we are planting the future for our children i mean ourselves and our children and for the birds and animals. So when we plant a tree, we are planting hope. Then we plant trees for ourselves, for our children, next generation, and for the birds and animals. So when we plant a tree, indirectly we are planting number one, hope. Number future for, I mean, ourselves and for the coming generation and for birds and animals. So that is a summary of our, I mean, this lesson. So when we plant a tree, actually we are planting, what? Number one, you see, future for. First of all, we plant hope. Secondly, we are planting future for ourselves, our children, and for birds and animal, animals. So we plant something that will last long after, you see, I mean, we are gone. So we are planting something for the future generation is yes, that will last even long after I mean after we are gone so it will remain long after we are dead the trees will be growing like anything is it not so it will bring a income I mean a building material then firewood whatever we are in need of and we are planting a hope for the future generation so we are planting that Something that will remain long after we are gone. Yes. There comes, I mean, the end of our lesson. I hope it is clear to you. Once again, go through the lesson. And if they say any doubt regarding uh, this all, all this, uh, let me know it. I will clarify. Thank you for watching. For more updates, uh, subscribe to the channel SGK English. Thank you.